Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to install the new Skyrim Special Edition Creation Kit, although it's not all that new to be honest, and most of the features at the time of this video are pretty much broken. But as you may not be aware, we do not install this via Steam anymore, like the good old days, we have to use the terrible Bethesda.net launcher. So if you want to go ahead and install new kit, you will need to go to your browser, you'll have to head to the terrible Bethesda.net website and install their very crappy launcher. Of course, I've already gone ahead and done that. And you want to go ahead and open that up. You want to make sure you get signed in and everything, and you should have the creation kit at the side here, along with the Fallout 4 one. Now, it does say it requires PC version of the game. Quite obviously, you're going to need to download the special edition. If you already own the Legendary Edition or all of the DLCs, you should have access to special edition for free. And once you've got this up on here, you want to go ahead and click install. Let that spin around for no reason. And then you'll get the ULA that nobody ever reads. So go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions you never read. Hit accept. And at this point, you should be able to select exactly where you want to install. However, a number of people, including myself right now, have experienced an issue where you may hear my mouse clicking like mad here. I cannot select where I want to install it and I can't do anything in this section here. However, by sheer luck, I am able to have it direct by default where I want it to install. It seems to have detected where special edition is and it will install it there anyway. So you can of course have a desktop shortcut or a start menu shortcut. I'm not going to have either. I would like to go and put it in my taskbar where pretty much everything else goes. And I'm just going to go ahead, hit install, let that do its thing. Depending on the speed of your internet, this might take mere seconds like me, or it could take a little while. You can pause it as well, but I don't know why you'd need to. And you'll let that do its thing and hit play. Now you might find that before this box comes up, it wants to install a few third party things. So Microsoft related stuff, just let it go ahead and do so. And it shouldn't take too long and you will be offered this option here. So this is script source extraction. Would you like to extract the sources of scripts? Now I've already gone ahead and done so. And if I have actually uninstalled this to do this tutorial, if I need to do this, I'll do it later anyway. Uh, you can of course leave it and just go ahead, install the kit. But if you plan to do any script work, you'll probably want this unpacking and there's no harm in doing so anyway. The files aren't that big, so you might as well hit yes. But for the purpose of this tutorial, just to get things rolling, I'm gonna click no. And it should load up the creation kit. Now those of you that have used the previous version of the creation kit will probably notice a very, very slight difference. There might be a couple of front changes. Some of it looks slightly cleaner, and I mean slightly clearer. And it will also change depending on your operating system, the look of it. But yeah, for the most part, the creation kit hasn't changed too much. It's now 64-bit, but it still crashes like a bitch. But yeah, for the most part, it's the same. Now, a thing to note is that the ESMs are yet again in the wrong order. Now, I'm going to do another video probably after this one at some point on how to change this. It'll be using a program like Loot or something because this is going to be fairly important when loading multiple master files. And in that regard, by default, yet again, you're going to have to make some any changes so that you can actually load up multiple ESMs and in fact the DLCs. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So I want to go ahead and close the kit. Now, one good thing to note before we carry on is that you're not going to need the Bethesda.net launcher open when you want to use the creation kit from now on. It's just needed for the initial installation. And you want to go ahead and navigate to your Skyrim Special Edition directory. So I've got a link to the data folder there on my desktop and I'm going to back up one. So in the usual place, wherever you've got it installed, in my case, my Steam apps common and Skyrim Special Edition, and if everything's where it's supposed to be, you'll see that you have the executable in here for the creation kit and the two any files which have had their sort of names changed as if you're familiar with the way that it was done last time, uh, they were called something different like Skyrim editor and editor prefs, I do believe. So we want to edit the Skyrim creation kit any here, not the prefs one. I'm going to open it with notepad plus plus and under general, just going to paste those lines in, save me typing them out. The usual b allow multiple master files equals one and b allow multiple master loads equals one and then you want to go down 
to the archive section, go under S resource archive list two. And you'll see because the way that they've changed the way that the textures are packed up in multiple BSAs and such, we've got quite a long string here. So just go to the very end and we're going to do what we used to do and just add in the DLCs on the end. So I'll just check them. Yep, dawnguard.bsa, hearthfires.bsa, and it is with the S on the end for some reason, and dragonborn.bsa, and that is all we need. So I'm going to go ahead, save that, and close it. And now you should be able to load up in the creation kit multiple master files and the DLCs. So one last thing that I want to go ahead and do is have a link on my taskbar to the creation kit. So it's as simple as renavigating to your main directory for Skyrim Special Edition. And I'm going to alt click and pin this to my taskbar. And what I'm going to be covering in the next video is how to change the icon. As what you might notice is Bethesda in their infinite wisdom didn't bother to change the sodding icon. So now I'm not sure which one I'm clicking on. Sure you'll be able to learn but I mean it's a bit stupid. I want to be able to just look and click. And they are exactly the same. You'll probably find that this is the same for Fallout as well. So tune in to the next video to find out how to go ahead and change this. And that is it for another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. You can of course go ahead and check out the rest of my work over on my website at www.docfox127.co.uk as seen on screen now. Everything that you're going to need is over there. All the links and such to my social media. And also be sure to go ahead and check me out on Discord where we've got quite a nice little community going on where you can come along if you need some help with something, get people to check out your mod or just have some general chat about everything Skyrim. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.